Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Blue Flag Podcast. Um, I hope you're all well. Uh, this is the Henry Kravitz YouTube channel as well. Um, obviously it's a bit later than I anticipated, so we've obviously had Spain and we've had Austria and a sprint race in Austria. So I thought I'd just do like a little, you know, catch up um, of those and, and, and a bit of news to, <coughs> excuse me, just to sort of see what's going on. So obviously um, at Spain it was announced that Flavio Biatori was uh, back at Renault. Uh, working for um, for the boss of Renault directly, um, he said to Martin on the good walk um, that he doesn't know what his role is as such. He literally it was his first sort of day there. Um, I believe it's probably more to do with engines and getting sponsorship money in through the door to help the team, and maybe put, make some personal signings if they need it, and maybe drive the market. Um, Lando obviously got pole, which was nice to see, but it's probably not the best track to get pole on because you've got a 600 meter uh, drive to turn one. And whether he defended from Max or not, one of them was going to get hit him or Russell would have got past him into turn one, unfortunately, just because he got a bad start. Um, in this instance, Russell got ahead and uh, he was only ahead for a couple of laps and obviously the Max overtook the lead. But what really hurt Lando's race was the fact that he was stuck, stuck behind George for a few more, a few extra laps. I think it's three extra laps, so that um, didn't help him. And obviously, in the end, he was finished 2.2 seconds behind Max, where he could have been a lot closer potentially, or fighting for the race win. Um, I thought that McLaren's were quick all weekend. I think they're, they're probably the quickest car. I think since the update, since Miami, they probably have been the quickest car. Um, I know there were some marks were made by Andreas Stellis in that it's a, uh, an aged, aging car now, because obviously they're not running updates of it. But it's working in, in all types of, you know, uh, uh, in, in Spain, you've got your fast and you've got your slow corners, and it worked really well. So, you know, they've got a car for most tracks. You know, they just probably need to bring just some small upgrades just to get themselves ahead of a ball, and, and they could win the Constructors title. You know, uh, obviously Ferrari, they were... Uh, three temps off pole, three and about three temps a lap off off um, off the off Verstappen, and you know if you take their their finish time, and you think and where where where's their pace going? I think Monaco because it's all slow corners probably suits their car better. They're probably not that good for fast corners. They they need to do some develop, development down that side. Um, yeah, and Leclerc was was fifth, and, you, and you're thinking to yourself, why? Where's it all gone wrong? Uh, Lando Norris also did get the fastest lap, a one, uh, a one seventeen point one one five, which 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 shows you um, all you need to know about the the pace in that car. Um, I think you know, on another day, if he hadn't been held up, he probably would have won that. Um, Alpine's got a couple of points, if, you know, ninth and tenth, so they got a couple of points. It did move ahead of, um, it did go ahead of uh, Haas. Obviously, Haas they had a good Austria, so they moved ahead of him again. Um, but yeah, I think um, uh, I saw a comment when people asked Andrew Benson some questions. I saw a comment, and I thought I'd just share it with you. I don't know if it's still there, whether you can find it or not. Um, but basically, he said, uh, David Sanchez, formerly of McLaren and Ferrari, and highly regarded as executive t technical director, and now they have recruited Fabio Biatori as an exec executive advisor. Whatever you think of Biatori's checkered history, if you doubt his expertise in F1, so then getting him in, it's obviously because he's a good businessman and you know, potentially um, engine supplies as well. Meanwhile, on tracks, uh, uh, meanwhile on track, things are looking up. Alpine had a terrible start to the season. They were the slowest team of all on average qualifying pace over the first five races. But in the second five, they were sixth and have reduced their gap to the front from 1.715 seconds to, to 0.793. That's impressive progress. 
Uh, I know Gazzy did say that he feels that there's not going to be much updates this season. Um, but that, you know, if they can carry on, and um, what I didn't realise, but Will Buxton tweeted it out, was that Jack Dill has been doing a lot of sim work, and his uh, inf his feedback has been helping the uh, Ocon and Gasly find time and the team find time. Um, also, in the press conference in Spain, in Spain Lewis was laid down on the sofa, and Max uh, walks in and made a joke that obviously. Does Lewis want a massage because uh, he's old and Matt Lewis had a smile on his face there was a bit of sort of banter there between those two and it's it's just good to see you know three or four teams challenging for the wins obviously at the minute Ferrari a little bit behind but uh, you know I still say that they uh, that, you know that they're they're up there um, to be honest uh, Yuki's obviously signed a year deal that'll be interesting I know that um that uh, Dr. Marky would like to put youngsters in that's the whole point Ricardo got the seat to try and get back to the Red Bull seat and he obviously hasn't done that now uh, so we have to uh, be interesting to see what's going on there uh, to see what they do there whether they, cause they wanna put, I think they want to put Liam Lawson in it so I think you've got to give him a chance uh, uh yeah, got to him. Um, yeah, so it's just interesting to see what happens there. Um, I'm just going to look to see where did Logan Sargent finish the Spanish Grand Prix because it'd be interesting to 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 see did he finish last? Uh, and the answer to that is uh, yes, he did. Fin he did finish that last, and he finished two laps down. Everybody got lapped up to Fernando Alonso in twelfth. Uh, Hulkenberg was, was according to this, was about eight seconds behind Ocon. I think it was closer than that. Maybe I was wrong. So it was Max won the race, Londo second, Lewis third, George fourth, Charles fifth, uh, Carlos Sainz sixth, Oscar seventh, and Perez eighth. My driver of the day was Gasly because he managed to keep Perez behind for quite a lot of time. Uh, but I've, but also, Max, you know, he didn't, you know, to work for it a little bit. He didn't have the quickest car. I don't really remember much sticking out. I can't really remember too much of the uh, race, to be honest. It's been too long ago. Um, and then, obviously, we had, during the um, during the lead-up to the Austrian Grand Prix, had it announced that Pierre Gasly was going to sign. And I've just found something on the F1 website. Um, which says famine uh, uh, so no Gaz, so Gazi signed or news broke in Austria that Gazi signed a multi-year deal to stick with Alpine uh, to at least the end of 2026 they're based with F1.com uh, Fam says they did say no, they wanted to keep Gazi to ensure stability that's obviously where they let Alcon go we want to see and have a fresh start and new ideas with the other. We all know that with Esteban, we were at, we were at the end of the cycle. It was five years, says Fermin, when we chatted in Alpine hospi Hospitality. It was diff difficult to keep both because we needed to renew, like we could do with the engineering side. We need to renew the blood to improve, to change the process. That's why, even if we brought a lot to the team, the time for Alpine and Esteban, Esteban was over. Then we keep Pierre because I think he still has a lot to bring to the team. He will develop in a different way with a different image and that's it. Gasly, who is believed to have agreed to stay some time ago, edged out Ocon by four points in the battle for P11 in the driver's standings last year. This season it's been just as tight with Gasly edging it by five points to three, having scored in each of the last three Grand Prix. Uh, the Frenchman's form relative to Ocon may have attracted prospect to rivals with LP struggling at the start of the year. They qualified with both cars on the back of the row back row of the grid in Bahrain and having lost a suit of senior staff in the last year or so, including the CEO, team principal, chief technical officer, sporting director, technical director and head of aero, it's understandable that Gasly was problematic in coming all bases in case Alpine spiralled and didn't turn things around. At least three teams are believed to have held discussions with him, but as those talks went on, Alpine continued to pre press him to stay while stimulatingly improving their form to the point where they're fighting back towards the front of the midfield and then a fight to get a point or two. 
family believes the work behind the scenes to generate that improvement helped convince Gansley to stay. Uh, uh, yeah, so w what he has seen since Barbara we made quite an interesting step amidst famine, but we're still not where we want to be. We're happy with evolution, but we're not happy with the position. Sure, the improvement helped. If we're still on the last row in last time out in Barcelona, we would have less power in convincing him of the project. What he has seen since the beginning of the year to now is evident of what we want to do with the project. The fact David Sanchez joined the project two months ago to head up the technical organisation having recently worked with McCarran and Ferrari is a real plus. We saw immediately change change first in the mindset, secondly in the direction of working technically. It's all good signs and that's why we decided to continue together. He trusts Luca Di Meo, Renault Group CEO and he trusts the project. We want to improve a lot to keep building the project. I think Pierre is convinced we will do everything to make sure we have the best possibility to make a much better team in the coming years because we have the support of the leadership team. So, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that was just, that was on the F1. Um, uh, by Lance Barreto uh, on the F1 website. Um, so yeah, and then obviously, who else? There was another, there was something else about this. Let's have a... Zoo and Sargent address their options for the future from Rosetta. So Zoo apparently has come out and said he's quite happy to be a role, uh, role uh, reserve driver and Sargent, I think, is probably maybe going to IndyCar. Uh, be interesting. Uh, obviously, Williams uh, bolstered the technical structure that features 26 new recruits from rival teams, including former, and they signed Matt Harmon. Um, we'll get onto that in a little bit. So, obviously, coming to Austria, uh, sprint weekend, uh, sprint race. Uh, yeah, it was uh, very, it was uh, interesting. Um, both Hasses were quick. Both uh, Hasses were quick. Uh, and then uh, Verstappen was on pole. Yeah, Verstappen was on pole, but the, by the tightest of margins. Excuse me. And then uh, I want to say. I can't remember the rest of the grid. Oh, now it's second. PS3 third. Russell. Fourth, science fifth, Hamilton sixth. Uh, Albon decided to. They started Albon in the pit lane so, so they could change uh, change the setup. And then everybody used the medium seafall tyre. Uh, and there was obviously a bought start because of the. Uh, into turn one, there was something to do with the photograph photographers there. Uh, and then on the restart, uh, Verstappen made a clean start, and then just once he managed to get the McLaren's out of DRS, he could just use his battery resin when he needed to. And then yeah, the, the McLaren's had a little bit, had a little little bit of a fight together. That's obviously how Pierce got past Norris. Um, so it should have been 23 laps or 22 laps. But what we also saw was a DRS train, and that was my concern going into the proper race. Uh, and then yeah, and then obviously um, then the race happened, and obviously. Max managed to find four tenths. He was four tenths clear when he started on pole. Um, and it was for 50 laps. It was just a bit of a boring. It was just a bit of a boring race, wasn't it? Let's let's just best be honest. It was just a bit of a boring race. Nothing really happened. And then there was was it a virtual safety car? And then when Max had a longer pit stop than normal, he put him under attack from Lando Norris, which he seemed to be quick. And then they ended up colliding. Obviously, Lando got a five second penalty for the, for track limit, which is fair enough. And then obviously they clashed. I personally think it was Max's fault, but you know that, that's the way I see it. 
Um, he got a 10 second penalty, which is the standard 10 second penalty. It happened with uh, Hamilton at Silverstone, um, 2021. So that, you know, 10 seconds, people saying that's not enough. Well, then you'd have to change the rules to make it, you know, more, you know, more severe penalty. But if you make it more severe, then people aren't gonna potentially make the moves. Um, so then George, after the safety car, George managed to win the race from Oscar, from Carlos, and then Lewis. Uh, Max was fifth. Nico Hulkenberg, my driver of the day, P6. He kept Perez behind him as well. Magnussen was P8. But like I say, both both houses had a really good race there. They got 12 points there um, from that. Ricardo was P9. Gasly P10. Obviously, him and Ocon got a bit close on the, the racing again. Charles is P11, Esteban P12, Lance Stroll P13, Yuki P14, Albon 15th, uh, Beltas and Zhu 16th and 17th, Fernando Alonso 18th, 18th, where has the pace gone? Like, just where? Where's the pace gone from that Aston Martin? And Logo Sargent was 19th. So the bits that we need to talk about after that was obviously this uh, in I watched the Ted's notebook and he said about Matt Harmon and he said obviously he's gone there now and he hasn't really designed a quick Alpine or Renault car but maybe it's because he didn't have the resources or the money so it'd be interesting to see how he does this um, they didn't uh, there's 26 people coming from Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, and Alpine. Uh, between them, they've worked on cars and power units that have scored 12 constructor titles and 13 championship. And I think there's 10 people coming from Alpine. Uh, I think I read somewhere there's 10 of them. Fabrice uh, Malaké joins the chief engineer, computing science on July the 1st, having, pre having previously worked as head of performance and at Ferrari. Juan Molina will become Chief Aero, reported to Head of Aero, Alan Canyon, and will start on July the 15th. He was briefly at Haas and Red Bull. Steve Winston Lee will be Chief Engineer Composites and Structures with a focus on leading and trans transforming the structure department with the design office. He, tw he has 22 years of experience in F1, including 14 years of Red Bull. Richard Firth is also to become Head of Performance Systems in 2025. He was formerly head of performance at LP and has 25 years of experience in the sport, including with Jordan, Force India, Sauber, Mauricio and McLaren. Of the 26 hires in total, 11 are in Aero and 13 in the design office. So that's obviously um, where they're, they're obviously looking for. They will be joined by Sorin Cheren, who will become Chief Information and Analytics Officer. He joins from Hewitt Packard Enterprise, where he spent 17 years specialising in artificial intelligence and innovation. Obviously, they will be announcing the others as and when they can, so it will be interesting, excuse me, to see what happens there. On the, the other thing with Ted's notebook was he mentioned that potentially Carlos Sainz could be going to Alpine, which I'm not really sure that was going to be a um, it's going to be I'm not sure that's he's probably going to get like a he's probably got the same offer as Williams like a 1 plus 1 maybe or he's got a, a 2 or 3 uh, maybe they've offered him a 2 year deal with a break clause in his contract for 2026 if there's a team further up the front up the, front, the field if they're not up there which there probably won't be but I can't see if he goes to a Williams or he goes to an Alpine or, you know, he goes to one of those two teams, is in a year's time, is he is he likely to get a, a team at the front of the grid? Is he going to get a... He's not going to get a Ferrari seat because that's not a team. He's not likely to get a Mercedes seat unless... Uh, sorry. Uh, a Red Bull seat unless Max goes. And the problem is that Mercedes want to put... Kimi Antonelli in the seat. So if they put him in there, then they're not going to be trying to sign Max unless they're going to unless George goes, and they're not going to get rid of George because I think George is like you know the one they want to keep. So I, I, I think 
I mean, if he's going to take a one-year deal, and Mercedes offered him a one-year deal, which we don't know, I would have taken that one-year deal, because it just gives you a year to race against George to see if you're quick enough, and if you're quick enough, then they might have you another deal, or, or you might get a deal somewhere else. So, I don't know if, I mean, obviously, me personally, I'd be looking at Audi. I'm surprised Audi haven't spent a lot of money on the infrastructure around the Sauber headquarters to get everything into place, ready for 2026. Um, I'm not sure whether they can do that or not because obviously they're not in F1. So as long as it doesn't come out of maybe sales bank account, then they might get away with it. But I don't obviously I don't know the rules too much, so um, don't quote me on that. So it'd be interesting to see. I did hear that Williams had given Science an extra week to decide if he was going to go there or not. I think that might be up this weekend. So we'd have to we have to wait and see. Um, if there's anything going to be announced. Now I thought it was going to be announced at Spain, but then obviously something must have happened. Um, something must have happened. Which would be quite interesting. Uh, oh, Andrew Benson just reported oh, uh, well, it's just the 3rd of July, I must have missed this, so this was so this was today, half past 11. Alpine have signed senior engineers from Red Bull and Ferrari as part of a structure aimed at moving the team towards the front of the grid. The three engineers started work for Alpine this week in the roles of Chief Aero, Head of Vehicle Performance and Deep Deputy Chief Engineer. It is, uh, an Alpine spokesman said it is pleasing that an increased number of top talent are joining the team as we continue to enhance our technical structure across our three key pillars, the same three pillars as McLaren. Which is the same as right. That's why Flavio is doing. He's like the Zach Brown. He's doing all the commercial side of things. The team is growing world championship winning potential across the board in order to be contenders at the front of the grid once again. Michael Broadhurst has joined Alpine as chief aero from his previous role as principal aero at Red Bull. Before that, he was deputy head of aero at McLaren. Head of vehicle performance, Vin Denali. Sorry, I'm. I'm I've uh, butchered his name. He was also recruited from Red Bull, where he was vehicle performance team leader. Jacopo Fanetti, Alpine's new deputy chief engineer, was previous Ferrari's head of simulation in the design office. At well known, Fantini worked alongside David Sanchez, who joined Alpine in May as executive technical director. Sanchez has been credited by insiders as played a large role in Alpine's revival after a difficult start to the season. Sanchez, who joined Alpine after leaving a new role at McLaren after just three months of this year, is said to have been able to quickly instigate new ways of operating the car to increase its performance. Because obviously it's too heavy, uh, the engines down, engines down, um, and not really that good for the aero. In addition to a program of weight loss, which has brought the car down to the minimum weight limit, this has led to a significant change in fortunes. Alpine has started the slowest in the grid, but have begun to consistently qualify the back of the top 10 scoring points in each of the last four races. Sina Sanchez was a significant move after months of turmoil dating back to last summer when the sacked officer Laurent Mossy. Good, because he, he was opposite. Because he got rid of Otmar, Alan Permain, Rob White, Pat Fry went, Matt Harmon left, Dirk De Beer and Bob Bell all left. Uh, as part of his role, Pajori is in uh, as part of his role, Vittorio is in charge of all recruitment and reports directly to Renault Chief Exe Executive Officer Luca Di Mara, not Team Principal Bruno Famine. So obviously, we're obviously up in our in, uh, structuring program and stopped from what's become a nice slump in terms of the top. Which we, uh, so, uh, Di Mara is even considering ditching Renault F1 engine program before the new rules and the 2026 will be coming across the team. Talks with Mercedes on that front have already taken place, where a final decision has since been taken. So that'll be probably down to. Uh, that could be down to Luca Di Meo and Flavio, but if they could get, if they could get obviously get Mercedes engine because Mercedes will be losing as to mine, then they'd be, they'd be uh, really really happy with that I think. But uh, you know, got to build your own engines, didn't you? I suppose if you're Renault, uh, well, I don't know where Adrian Newey is going to go. I think he said by the autumn we'll know for certain. He wants to have it all done by the autumn, so we know in the autumn. Um, so yeah, so just let me know in the comments down below 
where you think Carlos Sainz is going to go. Tell me your driver lineups for all the teams for next year. And tell me if you think um, Sauber will get a point this season. And let me know um, who your driver of the day was, or your driver of the day, driver of the day who your driver of the day was in Spain and in Austria. We won't do the sprint race, we'll just do Austria. So let, let me know in the comments down below, and I will reply to them all. Um, and obviously, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and share it if you think you know if you enjoy the content. Because hopefully, I'll be able to make some more content around work. So yeah. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you much for uh, for actually listening to this. Hopefully, I'll get to see some of your comments down below, and I'll um, interact and I will reply to every comment. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>